Peter Strickland is a fantastic director. If you haven't seen his previous movies, Barbarian Sound Studio and The Duke of Burgundy, you have got two terrific movies to check out. Before you go into this absolutely crazy and wonderful In Fabric, a movie that, as I sit down now to talk to you about it, I am really struggling about what I'm going to say about this one. I'll just start off by saying that I loved it. I thought it was a fantastic movie, but it is most definitely unlike anything else I have seen before. As, as I'm about to say these words, I know it's going to sound campy and strange, but that is most definitely not what this movie is. It's about a colour dress. Yes, you heard that right. It is about a colour dress. Now, this is a period piece movie, and at the heart of this thing is this really weird and strange department store. This department store that seems to be a hub of the social community. Everybody wants to go there for the sales, everybody is clambering outside to get in to this shop and it is populated by these strange and weird service people. People who may be cultish or witches or something strange, it's never told outright but it's alluded to in some certain scenes and it seems to be that there is this one dress that we sell to our main character at the start that seems to cause all the problems. Sheila, as we're introduced to her, is a recently divorced uh, woman who is living with her young son. Let's say young, he must be about 18, 20. He's got a relationship of his own and Sheila just feels kind of left, just left behind. Her husband, her ex-husband, has moved on, got somebody else. Her son now has a partner and doesn't need his mum as much anymore and she pretty much becomes alone and is struggling to deal with that. She's trying to date people but she just seems out of touch. The people that she meets seem to be strange kind of people that don't have the same wavelength as her. She buys the dress uh, so that she can look good in one of her dates and that's when things in her life start to go wrong. And it's never campy as in the dress is floating about killing people. It's more an effect that has on the psyche and on the people that wear it and how it twists their lives, turning them into a wreck. And that's possibly the best way I can put it. But what you really get in this is you get dramatic pieces. And it's two storylines kind of put together in one movie. Uh, the one of Sheila and it kind of switches later on to Reg. Um, but we'll focus on Sheila just now. And it's all about a, a kind of relationship drama. How she's coping with her divorce and getting on and out and trying to meet new people. But there is horrific elements in it as well. The red storyline is again, it's a young man who's getting married to his long-term partner. He has a job that he doesn't like. Um, it's going to be strange, but on his stag do, um, his father-in-law or somebody buys a dress and makes him wear it at some point. And that is, he is infected by this. His wife wears the dress at some point as well. And she becomes infected by this toxic nature that this dress has. And again, we just jump in from one family drama into another as these people are almost stuck in a rut as they are getting to their wedding day, trying to deal with the uh, personal things and uh, losing jobs, uh, not having a spark in their relationship, kind of almost going through the motions, how Reg is always kind of put upon and put down and doesn't really fight back. And it's basically just two dramatic storylines that are shrouded in this horror centric fashion. You get these weird and wacky characters that turn up throughout the movie that seem completely different from any other characters that we have. When we meet Sheila and we meet Reg, they're relatable. They feel like real people that you can attune to and latch on to and you want to see their story. Their story may not be a happy one, but you're interested in their life because they feel fully fledged out characters. The world round about them is strange. The department store staff are all weird and a little bit different and odd. And then other people we meet, like the bank managers, who deal with Reg at one point and are the bosses of Sheila, are both extremely odd characters. But they add a kind of levity and ridiculousness to the movie itself as well. The movie looks great. The way it's shot, the moments of the dress just kind of laying about the house have this eerie feel to them as though something is about to happen. But it's all about the characters. It's a marvellous way of really just focusing uh, true horror onto these people's lives. They may not be soaked in blood or destroyed, but their lives, their psyche, are all going to be withered away, rotten because of this horrific toxic element that has moved into their life. 
It's a hard one to break down, like I said. It's a period set uh, movie, I think it's maybe 70s or 80s. It has all that aesthetic. It has um, the TVs, the clothes, uh, the production, the way the, the place looks and the house and the decor is all really nostalgic and strange. The TV advertisements for that department store are, are really psychedelic and weird. And it's just an overall a, a very strange movie. But the best thing about it is the strangeness. It's unlike anything else I can really put my finger on. It's another wonderfully compelling and a movie that just draws you in to the tale of these characters. And even when it splits from one character and just moves on to the other, you don't really notice it immediately. You feel like we're going to cut back and we never do, but you never feel lost. You feel as if you've got two complete stories here that are in the same world, that are connected by this dress. <laughs> I, I couldn't rate this highly enough. I thought In Fabric was terrifically fun. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. At least check out the trailer, see what you think of it. Let me know in the comment box below what you think of the movie about a coloured dress. And I'll see you next time on Man vs Film.